Hey guys, this is Infinite Flash here. Today I'm going to be discussing the Leningrad Dutch. And a few move orders here and there about how to how you ideally want to play it, and um, what, what exactly is going to, going to be going on in the sidelines today. So against the Leningrad, you can basically play it against d4, c4, or knight f3, any kind of Dutch in fact. But for uh, the normal purposes, we're just going to play d4. Now, I mean, you can play the Leningrad via the g6 move order, but I mean, that gives white the option of playing e4. So usually you have five happens. And it, I'm not going to discuss all the sidelines with bishop g5, knight c3, and then, you know, the bishop may come out to here, here again. Or even uh, e4. Um, is these kind of sidelines that white definitely uh, can definitely consider. Uh, today, mostly, I'm going to just talk about. Uh, the, Knight f3, or in, in this combination of c4, g3. I mean, white, white, if white, white can display c4 too if he wants. Um, against knight f3, instead of c4, um, this is how usually the Dutch will happen. Castles, castles, and now black plays this d6 move. Uh, controlling, getting some control over the e5 square. I mean, it, it, it doesn't really feel right in the center, because if you play like a move like e6, it's not really clear what this bishop might do. Um, in a lot of Dutch systems, this black's queen side uh, is going to go undeveloped for a long time. And it's you've got to make sure that you set up active counterplay. And with d6, you gain control possibly with a future break with e5, possibly with c5. And uh, that's going to be a lot of, that's a big theme in this, I think, in the video, and in the Leningrad in general. So after d6, I mean, white has a lot of options here. He can play knight c3, he can play b3, he can play b4, he can play queen c2. I mean, that, these are all just normal moves, but, um, hmm. to start off with, hmm. I think, well, b3, I mean, what, black just continues with this normal, I think, Knight c6 move, and um, just continue with this normal development. And if, I mean, if white doesn't play d5, I mean, if he plays like a normal move like knight c3, and kind of transposing to this other main line, black can just play e5 and take his own pawn, you know, part of the center. And I mean, black doesn't, white doesn't usually want to close this kind of position. This is like a king's Indian uh, kind of structure, kind of with a close center, but black's just ready to. March with his kingside pawns, knight f5, queen e8, queen h5, and then start to generate this attack over in the king side. And okay, I mean, white doesn't have the best bishop to help facilitate this kind of queenside expansion that hasn't really begun yet. Um, that's why d5 is not really recommended. Um, usually, I mean, in, for this position to make sense, I mean, I guess white just probably has to take. I mean, if he plays another move like e3, I think black just plays e5. And, I don't know, this knight has to move now somewhere awkward. And you can probably start to think about uh, even d5 here, probably d5. And um, it's similar to a French, but, I mean, you can still generate this kingside expansion. Or maybe if you don't want to commit to d5, you can start with h6 and maybe go with a6 to prevent knight b5 and queen e8, g5, queen h5 at some point, probably in conjunction with f4. Um, this looks, at some point, I mean, um, looks pretty promising. So, I mean, that, I mean, if usually white just wants to take, take, I don't know, I mean, queen c2 if he wants to avoid the queen trade, but I mean, knight d4 is already there. Hmm. I mean, this kind of position is no problem for black. So, I mean, I mean, obviously, like, black's doing fine since he has his own share of the center there in a symmetrical structure. Um, usually they won't play b3. Most of the time, they could play d5, by the way. They could play d5, but against this d5 pawn push, although, you know, white's kind of controlling these two squares, preventing this knight c6 move, um, white's also mess, uh, weakened this c5 square. So what you want to do probably is bring out the knight to this spot, which looks slightly unusual, but it has a really, really concrete idea with knight here. And if you get the opportunity to play a5, play that. But, you know, um, you also want to bring your knight there and control more in the center. 
possibly play e5 at some point. This is a really, really important idea. Maybe play c5 and get some kind of Benoni or King's Indian with f5 already and It's very, very um, interesting in my opinion. I mean, for example, if white plays e3 to, you know, try to play b4, uh, black wants to go here anyway. And if he gets kicked, I think uh, knight e4? Or maybe it was this one. I think uh, this one should just give black a good game. Yeah, I think this just gives Black a good game, honestly. I mean, look at this, these like well positioned knights. This bishop's just ready to jump across the diagonal. Uh, I'm fairly sure, actually, that this is quite okay for Black, too. Um, it's just I'm not really for sure um, if this is a good thing or a bad thing in general, because now this knight has to go away. But um, this other knight move looks pretty sound and. I think black has a perfectly playable position here. Um, I mean, after a few more moves, like such as bishop d6, perhaps a5 or c6, um, trying to gnaw at the center, maybe e5 at some point, this position has to be perfectly playable for black. Um, this early queenside stuff is not that recommended, recommendable for white without uh, development. So, I mean, usually white just plays knight c3 here, you know, Controlling the d5 square. You know, this knight is, it just feels kind of right here. Um, and then here, black always has like these three mainline moves with queen e8, c6, queen e8. Um, c6 is actually the most popular move in this position at, you know, top level. But, you know, I kind of like this other move, knight, knight c6. And, I guess the starting this is the starting point of the mainline line grid that I've been playing for like the past three years. I mean, I don't think I've really gotten a terrible position because of the opening, because of this opening. Um, from my experience, I feel like Black's doing quite okay. And the idea is the same same thing. White Black plays wants to play e5 since this knight controls that square too. Um, you know, if White plays some substandard move like b3 or e3. I mean, just e5, and I mean, black's doing okay. I think I already showed that line too. Um, e5, the same thing here. It's really all go okay. Um, you know, white has a few ideas to combat this e5 move. You know, in this kind of position, if white uh, black wants to take, maybe white wants to open the file and then somehow attack it with rook d1 to you know, get in the same file as the queen, and then maybe try to take advantage of the weak d5 square. So he might play a move like queen c2, planning to meet e5 with, you know, takes, takes, rook d1. And at first this kind of looks bad, because if queen, C's, queen e7, then uh, knight d5. And, you know, black is actually in trouble because of this strong pressure on uh, the c7 pawn. And that's not recommendable, uh, recommendable for uh, black. I actually had this in a game, and I lost in like ten moves from this position. It's very, very, uh, very uh, quick and direct play by white. So often white black should play to this awkward-looking square, but you know actually this isn't that bad. If you let black have you know one more move, maybe he plays bishop e6, or maybe he plays e4, h6 if the knight goes here. And uh, he controls the d4 square, by the way, very, very nicely. After this kind of e4 pawn push, he takes some space. Um, usually white wants to react as fast as possible, so he plays knight d5. And this is kind of a theoretical line that you got to know if you're going to play this knight c6 line. That, um, you know, e4 is pretty playable here. Uh, I should go back, actually. Um, you know... I think Neil McDonald also recommended Bishop D7 in his Dutch book, but I uh, I like this independent line I, I found uh, during one of my games. In this line. Um, e queen E8, Knight D5, and in this position, uh, Black you know sacrifices the C7 pawn, but he gains some tremendous compensation. And uh, I mean, White obviously doesn't want to go here, for example. I, mean, I think. <laughs> It just takes, takes, hmm. or maybe just takes, takes, takes. 
Right. That, my bad. I'm just being silly. This drops. I didn't even I forgot about that. Um, you know, after I mean, this kind kind of a uh, position is just really really nice for uh, really nice really nice for um, for black. I mean. I mean, after rook takes probably bishop b7. And this position looks quite all right for black. He even has more space in that position, ready for uh, open open lines against for his pieces. So usually, I mean, against e4, white just wants to take here, and you know, black plays this move to gain this tempo on the knight. So if the knight jumps here, you're actually winning a piece. Um, now this knight has to take here, and black's idea is that oh yeah, I'm getting some material in return. And now since this bishop's under attack. He's got to take here. I mean, white can take here with the pawn, but he wants this bishop on this op nice open diagonal. And uh, here, black just continues developing and sees that the knight is trapped since the queen controls the c7 square. And um, here, I mean, white should just continue developing with b3. A move like knight b6 doesn't really force the rook to go at a8 and waste a move, and this kind of structure um, can be very, very nice for black, actually, by the way. Possible knight a5 and knight c knight c4, excuse me, to attack that pawn. And if b3, you know, maybe there's this, you know, attack against the, along the diagonal. White black can also play like knight b4 in some positions. I mean, probably b3, and you know, after knight b4, it's starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I mean, if queen c3, then you have this knight d5 idea. So I don't really know where the queen goes, but it's somewhere awkward and. I mean, black can also think about knight d7, knight c5 to kind of anchor the position together, and I mean, really, really nice control over this pawn majority. It's some you can get kind of good control, and you know, knight e4, the direct knight e4 is not bad as well. Trying to go control the c3 square. Um, I don't know what black white does even in this position. It looks really, really uncomfortable. You know, queen b1, knight e4, bishop b2, here, here. This looks excellent for black since he has the two bishops. And he can probably make kind of get rid of one of his weaknesses eventually. And look at this, this. This is just an awesome configuration. So yeah, I mean, okay. Um, usually white just continues developing, and you know, I mean, white black can play knight here, but he has to get his knight back, and that's probably more important than trying to go for some tactics along this diagonal. So black usually just takes here. This should be to. And the position is pretty murky. You can make up your own uh, evaluation about this position. I posted this on chess.com, and, um, and honestly, I'm not sure about the evaluation just yet. I think it's perfectly playable for both sides. And I don't know. I mean, I always find that the two miners always, actually the two knights in this case, um, tend to outperform the rook in the two pawns here. Um, which is the material imbalance here. Um, the thing is, even though the, even though white technically has a material advantage, it's not really clear if he can make use of it in the long run. I mean, black can slowly take space here, and the minor pieces are definitely more well equipped to, you know, uh, give an you know deliver an attack over on your on the king side with white's only bishop here, by the way. And um, it's not so clear what this rook's doing along the final. Probably white will advance his queenside majority. Probably trade off a central a central pawn here. Hmm. It's really, really unclear stuff. Uh, it's worth investigating. I, I definitely uh, recommend you take the time to look at that if you're um, if you're kind of a theory guy. So queen c2 is an interesting line, honestly. But, I mean, most of the time, white just plays this d5 move. And also I should uh, mention that um, in no, instead of this knight c3 move, white can try to play this b4 move. But, I mean, I have a couple of ideas versus this that, you know, give, like, a perfectly good position. One is just c5, trying to rip open this diagonal. Excuse me. And I don't know what white does, really. Maybe a3, but... What is the idea? Maybe even a5. Even though this weakens the b5 square a lot, I mean, you're just ready to take this pawn, and I mean, white has a weak c4 pawn in this kind of position. And, I mean, if he, instead of a3, 
plays takes takes. I mean, White can't really take this at 94, picking up the rook. And I mean, I mean, I don't even know what White does in this kind of position. Maybe not takes though. Maybe uh, possibly knight e4, possibly knight c6, kind of developing towards the center. I mean, this, these two pawns are about to come off, and white's going to be left with this isolated c4 pawn. And okay, white white still has the e5 square, but I don't think this should be so much of a problem in the in the long run because I mean, even though white has the knight here, um, black has the open two files here. There's rooks and queen to coordinate on the pawn and stuff like that. So, I mean, white just plays this move normally. And then black continues with this development. And, you know, in, to prevent the z5 move, white usually plays this annoying move, uh, d5. And... I mean, black has a couple of options. You can play knight here or knight here. And, I mean, for a long time, knight a5 I thought was better than knight e5, but I changed my mind in the last few months after I uh, learned that, you know, the main lines with knight d2, kind of defending the c4 pawn, queen d3, you know, those are okay for white, and they're probably a little bit better for white, but I think b3 just, I think this b3 move, Counterintuitively, uh, opening this diagonal for, for black actually gives white a, a huge positional advantage. And black, white's idea is knight e4. So now he wins the pawn, he wins a knight or the exchange, right? But black, this is what white counts on. White takes this knight. White takes this rook. And okay, by the way, you you can technically bail out if you want for black, but surely with this space, this beautiful knight, bishop attacking the pawn. Bishop ready to come here, and the stranded knight over here, um, white has to be a little bit better, if not better in general. So, uh, okay, takes, black takes the rook, now white plays this move. And at first it doesn't look so clear what white's threatening, but white's actually threatening this bishop d2 move, attacking the bishop and attacking the knight here. So, black has to kind of react to this move with the c5 move. The queen protecting the knight here. And here, um, you can see that all, not the king, but all the pieces are kind of leaning to over the king's side over here. It's, um, it kind of makes sense of what's white's next move here. So, opening the center directly, directly. And, I mean, black has quite a bit of difficulties. I mean, for example, I mean, if f takes e4, I think uh, white plays knight h4, bishop here, probably some sack on g6, and, okay, I mean, I mean, black should probably bring this bishop back into the game with bishop here, you know, try to maybe take off this knight in an emergency, try to make use of this extra exchange. But, I mean, after bishop takes g6, now white is actually threatening, probably. Uh, knight takes g6, bishop takes g6. Um, and queen h5 with a pretty really strong threat right there. So, I mean, this kind of attacker, and by the way, white's also threatening probably this move too. Um, knight takes h7, trying to break the whole thing open, so black uh, logically has to take there, take there, and I mean, look at the c6, e6 square, it just looks so uncomfortable. This knight's gonna take a while to get back into play. Um, and uh, white can definitely apply pressure here in the position with maybe this kind of, these kind of ideas, trading out the light squared bishops and taking advantage of the e6 square. Um, even though it's equal material with, in, in view of the pawns, black's rook and knight here um, are pretty bad pieces, and they're not really contributing to the main factors in the position. Like black wants to get to the a2 pawn often, but it just can't happen, I guess. And okay, black has some ideas with a6 and b5, but I mean, I really don't like this position. I, I doubt that many people know this kind of exchange sack line, but um, that's just uh, my that's just my thoughts. You don't want to go for that kind of position. You want to go for something aggressive like a 95. 
and a black uh, really threatens this kind of pawn. And if b3, you can still take this pawn because, wait, not maybe not take the pawn, excuse me. Um, if b3 probably just takes, takes in knight e4, and it's not the same kind of position because you don't have this, you know, silly knight on a5 as before. And, you know, white doesn't want to really sack over here because this is actually an exchange now. And the knight's not really that bad, and you know the e file is not open just yet. Even if white plays e4, you still have the two bishops to work with in this kind of position, and that's a very very nice position. So usually, you know, what white just takes here, takes here, and plays, you know, a move like b4, or maybe a move such as queen c5, queen b3. I mean, there's a lot of moves like f4. And this will be the subject of my next lecture of the uh, 95 move. What are these kind of details? Uh, I want to thank you for watching. And, uh, you know, hit that like button. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, you know, give me some constructive criticism about the video. Did you like it? What, what did you not like? Um, you know, technical difficulties that I might have had with the sound, the video. Any thoughts? Appreciate That would be appreciated. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.